Hi, I'm Emma from EV FireSafe. One of the most difficult things to explain to emergency responders about electric vehicle fires is the concept of the traction battery. What is it? How is it constructed? Why does it catch fire? And why do we sometimes see reignition of that fire hours, days or even weeks after the initial incident? To help us explain this, we've come down to Jaunt Motors. They're an electric vehicle conversion company based here in Melbourne, and they very kindly let us have a look at a traction battery that they're building for one of these converted Land Rovers. So an electric vehicle traction battery is the power supply that gives the vehicle momentum. Inside it are these lithium ion battery cells. These store an enormous amount of energy in a very small space. Multiple battery cells create a battery module that looks like this, and multiple modules create a battery pack that looks like this. This traction battery pack has been designed to fit inside the old engine bay of a Land Rover. However, the electric vehicle you'll buy from a dealership will have a single layer of batteries typically in a rectangular shape that will sit underneath the vehicle. They're the lowest point of the vehicle sitting in between the four wheels. All electric vehicle fires start with what's called thermal runaway. Let's imagine for a moment that these two battery modules, a traction battery pack in an electric vehicle that's traveling from Melbourne to Geelong. Along the way, the driver unfortunately hits a concrete barrier and that causes one of the cells in this module to be abused, the correct terminology for it. And the cell short circuits and starts to heat up. As it does, it starts to dissipate that heat to other cells within this module. Eventually, the pressure in that cell becomes so great that it bursts. The, typically, the safety valve or blast cap will pop off and it will release that pressure in the form of gases that form a vapour cloud. Other cells around it will soon follow and we now have an unstable chemical process called thermal runaway. Once it's started, it's very hard to stop it and it also explains why electric vehicle fires are very difficult to put out. So thermal runaway is happening inside the battery pack underneath the vehicle and we can't really see what's happening. So what should we as emergency responders be looking for in order to determine whether or not thermal runaway is occurring? The first thing we'll see is a dark vapour cloud of heavy metal particles escaping from the cathode of the battery cells followed by a lighter vapour cloud of gases. These are primarily hydrogens, so that vapour cloud is highly toxic and highly flammable. We'll also hear popping noises as the battery, uh, battery cells burst and hissing and whistling as the gases escape under pressure. We may also see bits of battery casing become projectile from underneath the vehicle. In the EV fires we researched, one of two things will now happen. In 90% of the cases, there was ignition. Gases escaping under pressure from the cells ignited, forming jet-like directional flames from underneath the vehicle. In 10% of the cases, there was a vapour cloud explosion, and this often happens in enclosed spaces. Now, it's not the role of our project to recommend suppression methods. However, what we can say is that best practice from overseas fire agencies and many electric vehicle manufacturers is to use lots of water that you should establish early. Water can be used to suppress the flames, but also underneath the vehicle to cool the traction battery. By Hitting the traction battery with a stream of water, you absorb some of that heat caused by the thermal runaway, which will eventually slow and then stop that chemical process. In 10% of the cases we studied, there was a reignition event. In six cases, a tow truck was damaged, and in two, a tow truck driver was injured. If we go back to our pretend electric vehicle traction battery, the module over here has gone into thermal runaway, it's ignited and been suppressed and we're getting ready to remove it from the scene. 
But what we can't know is that this module over here had a cell that was also impacted in the initial collision and has now short-circuited and is now going into thermal runaway. This is causing a reignition event. It's not reignition of the original cells, there's nothing left to burn there. It's a reignition of the battery pack overall. So I hope that's helped you better understand electric vehicle traction battery fires and how they occur. All this information and much more is available on our website. If you're with a volunteer emergency brigade, you can download a free information pack at our website. And if you're a tow truck driver, fleet manager or automotive workshop, there are short courses specific to your sector. If you have any questions, please get in touch via our website. You can also follow us on Instagram and Facebook. Many thanks to Jaunt Motors for letting us come along tonight. And we'll also pop a link to their YouTube channel so you can follow some of these amazing builds.